How you doing, kids? We up to? I'll take these with me, yeah. No. All right, Mikus. Mikus. Well, okay. I'll ring you. I'll ring you, Ruby. I promise you. Well, that. So, so much for going for McDonald's. Yeah, I might as well just do this now. Then. Yeah, should have gone. Should have gone in tonight earlier. Let them swap some swim. You can't win either way, can you? Well, you know, Dillian's our guy. In a lot of ways, Dillian is the fans' favourite, the underdog. The guy we hope slays the beast better than Anthony Joshua. But I think what's happened today has left a, a bad taste in the mouth for a number of reasons, none of which I attribute to Dillian, none at all. I think in this situation, Dilly is probably the, the most sensible guy that's been there. He's the most sensible actor in the sorry saga that we've witnessed over the last, what, five months? So what we are at the moment is you can't go with withdrawn the charge against Dilly and White for essentially popping for Dynabol or the metabolites of, which is fair enough. There you go. Go on to Diana Ball. Go and look on UCAD's testing website 
And look at the other one as well. The, the one that's supposed to be even more stringent. And it explains about how Dianabol can be in your system and then go away and you never take Dianabol again and you'll get neg negative tests. But some of it can lay dormant and then it comes back to haunt you up to two years later. Go and read Victor Conte's book. He now works for American government. He's the guy who were involved with Marion Jones when she got busted and other top athletes. He was also Andre Ward's uh, man for it, three year, three or four year. Shane Mosley. He got busted, Shane Mosley. Not saying Andre Ward's a drug sheet, but if I started knocking around with Curtis Warren, who was a drug dealer from Liverpool, would people say I'm a drug dealer or would they say I'm his mate? Guilty by association. I know it's wrong, but that's what you get. So listen to this though. This is really good, this one, Terry. It's one of his best. It's how he breaks it down because he's got that education, hasn't he? And I imagine that's something that Dillian's team, legal and SMEs or subject matter experts, have had to give UK anti doping. Fair enough. They probably delivered that to the satisfaction of UK anti doping. It still leaves me sadly uncomfortable, not with Dillian. Now, I'm going to park Dillian to the side for a second. We're talking about the doping principle of strict liability. If it's in you, it's your fault. And Dillian's not the first guy to make a mockery of this. So many other people have that it's embarrassing. And I think actually Dillian's probably the, the least worst offender in this sense because there are people who've got away with you know popping for steroids based on i kissed my girlfriend vigorously which is ridiculous so if you want to separate the problem here the problem is zero percent dillian and a hundred percent you can dillian's the competitive i agree with that i think dillian why i think they went after a big name to scare everybody in the sport. But they must have forgot. Dillian White's... Yeah, he's a former British champion, isn't he? But... Dillian White nearly beat Joshua, didn't he? And he's had four pay-per-views and he's a feared heavyweight, isn't he? So... I think they picked the wrong guy to go after and he set his lawyers on him. So that's what I think. But... I think he's been targeted because he's got a previous conviction, but if they found something in his test, why is it all of a sudden not there now, or why is it not an issue now? Did the test get contaminated because the other testers didn't find it, did they? Was it something laid dormant? I don't know, but they sullied his reputation. And another thing as well, if Dillian White were doing well and he were looking at getting some sponsorship like with Nike or... Adidas or Puma or whoever has that now been taken away from him because of Thomas Hauser and UCAD we don't know there's more unanswered questions and I think something needs to be done because otherwise the sport's just going to keep going on and on I mean Eddie Hearn crying about Patrick Day dying but yeah eight weeks later he's put a show on with 50% drug cheats are heavyweights. After top, after main act, put 10 heavyweights on the show, take the main act out, that leaves eight. Four of that eight have been done it past. It's all there in black and white. The athlete, a man who's determined to win, and most likely, you know, do whatever it takes to win. Why? Because if that ring, his life is on the line. It is not his job to police it. It is the job of you, Ted, as the UK anti doping authority, to police the sport. To police, to police Dillian, in fact. And what they've done is fail to do that. So, if anyone has access to the statement, and I invite you to read the statement, it's on two pages of A4. Dillian's tweeted it himself, so you can you can get it on Dillian's page. The last point worries me because it says, in light of everything we have received in terms of evidence, 
we believe that this is consistent with a contamination event. So what was contaminated? Like, what on earth was contaminated with Dianabon? What process did you go through to establish it was a contamination event? To your satisfaction, you can't do it. Look, if Dillian says, look, I took a contaminated supplement because otherwise, how else could it have got in me? I'm with my 100%. But I go back to the John Jones thing where the emerging science is actually that these steroids can sit in your fat cells for weeks, months, years after you took them, after you thought they were having an effect. And under extreme weight loss, under extreme calorie expenditure, they come back out. So stuff that was in you that you kept suppressed can always come out. It's like melting the polar ice caps and you find fossils of woolly mammoths. It's not an accident. That was there already. And if what we're saying now is it's enough that I tell you something was contaminated, fine, by all means, I'm okay with that. But let's give up the pretense that boxing is a clean sport. Boxing's now become much like bodybuilding where we just accept in the pursuit of watching freaks fight each other. We're just going to accept doping as part of the course. On this Joshua undercard, there are four people that failed drugs tests. There are ten heavyweights on the card. Take the two main protagonists out. That leaves eight. Fifty percent of the people on that undercard as heavyweights have failed a drugs test. Let's stop pretending the sport is clean. And let's stop pretending that we care that it's clean or that it's not clean. Because now we realize that's wholly irrelevant. My take on it, as an outsider looking in, is that you can have been scarred by the Fury incident. And they dare not engage in litigation again. The coffers are low. You know, Dillian's team is strong. He has the finances to fight this. Which isn't to say he's guilty, but it's to say that UCAD didn't want this fight. And if you don't believe me, look at the list of people they catch. It's always low-level athletes. So if you go through the UCAD list... Liam Cameron got a four-year ban for a first offence. Four-year ban. Four years. Tyson Fury had a Nandrel loan. Then he failed a coke test and then he refused a test. He were looking at a 12 year ban. He got a two year back data ban for all three tests. Liam Cameron, one offence, co cocaine that allegedly, four year ban. But if he'd have gone guilty, they'd have given him 18 months. Yeah. 
by saying, well, we're not going to pursue it, then pursue it and run out of money and humiliate themselves. So for me, Delhi and white boxing in Saudi Arabia was a message to everyone in the UK boxing infrastructure saying, look, if you don't want to respect the fact that we will do what we want, we will do it in locations that allow us to do what we want. And you lose out. You lose credibility and you lose money. And now you can have a choice to make. Do they even care about boxing now? If you can't catch the big fish, what the hell do you even care about boxing now? You've been humiliated. And Hearn is probably the beneficiary of all of this because now you can all be reticent to bother with his boxes. Like, well, it's not worth it. If I know that there's a war chest willing to fund all of this, what's the point? So, we're at a point now where I can't tell a box not to go. podcast with Terry all you Twitter fans out there who like boxing I suggest you go and follow Terry on Twitter his Twitter handle is at Highfield Boxing alright at Highfield Boxing That's basically it, really. Uh, so, give him a follow. He's a massive boxing fan, he's a trainer as well. He can have a fight as well, and if people don't like what he says, I'd be very surprised because he knows what he's on, he knows his stuff and he's got out to gain from it uh, he does it with no sponsors or like that, he gives his time up same with amateur, he gives his time up that's why I tend to respect them people who give the time up and because there's no money in boxing it's a top minute small percentage you're chasing you're chasing false dreams if you think there's money in boxing you've got to have something else going in your life to be involved in boxing and have boxing as a hobby a passion Terry it's his passion he's got a good job go on then mate but uh Look at this here man, every night this is like this. Dancing class of blocking road off. Uh, <clears throat> but here's what it is, so I'm now on my way over to uh, my mates. He's got, my mate's got this drink for me that his grandma used to use. Apparently it'll get all phlegm off my chest and some uh, But I should have just put some Vicks on my chest. Shouldn't have a weekend, but... I should be alright. I think I'm going to be alright Wednesday. We'll see. But... Doesn't help, does it, when you're going out in the morning. Doing a three mile walk in this cold weather. But 
is what it is, so. Yeah, it's, it's been interesting, this video. Uh, is Dillian White guilty? I don't really know, to be honest. After all that palaver we've gone through for, what, six months? Is he guilty? Well, nobody knows, do they? Nobody know, Nobody can say either way, because you can have balls it all up again, haven't they? And they've probably done Dillian White a disservice and probably cost him some fans. They've probably cost him some pay-per-views. I know people have come to me in the street and say they're not going to watch Dillian White on pay-per-view because he's a drug cheat. But yet, no it's been proven and it's not been disproven. All they've done is sully his name, haven't they? Now, there needs to be just one agency. And I think that if that happens, moving forward, everything will be all right. That's what I think, anyway. But, so... All right, so, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. All right? Biggest biggest packaging company in area we've just got a multi-million pound deal with coca-cola and innovation alloys if you don't know what that is look it up all right so peace out keep on trucking a shout out to all you haters as well keep them comments coming make sure you leave a comment good or bad but make sure you leave one all right peace